welcome in the one and all. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being with us. Yes, it's that time for your favorite, my favorite, everybody's favorite, three guys before the game. One of these days I'm going to have to tell you about your favorite, my favorite, everybody's favorite. I was at a bar, Buffalo, New York. Had a big roulette wheel. About four or five times during the course of a night, bartenders would say, whoop, hang on a second. They'd spin a roulette wheel. No matter what it was, no matter what it ended up on, they would always kind of just manipulate it to free shots of Alabama Slammer. Cue the Hawaii 5-0 song. Bartenders jump up on top of the bar playing Hawaii 5-0 and people like birds waiting for water. They're just, just poor shots. Then they would say, it's time for your favorite, my favorite, everybody's favorite. Alabama Slammer. It's not what we're here to talk about. We're off the rails quickly. That's a record about 12 seconds in. I just want to, I mean, just, I say that a lot. Your favorite, my favorite. That's where it stems from. Tell you who my favorite is. My favorite volleyball coach at West Virginia University is here. Ladies and gentlemen, summer series continues, and we're delighted to be joined by WVU volleyball coach Jen Greeny. This is going to be fun. We're going to go a bunch of different directions as far as background, future, and a whole lot more. Three Guys Before the Game is brought to us by Comax Business Systems, keeping West Virginia's business data safe, secure, and efficient for 25 years. By GoMart. Get that GoMart rewards card where you can instantly save on fuel and food. Visit GoMart.com. Or if you have one of those... Call them smartphones. You just they, you put these apps on there, Brad. Did you know that? I've got it. I've got the GoMart app. Yeah, put the GoMart app on there, and it's just like instantly you're saving money. Three guys also brought to us by Lou Wendell Marine Sales in St. Albans. They happen to sell family fun. Visit Lou Wendell Marine Sales.com. Jen doesn't know this yet, but every James Bond movie in which there's a pontoon, you know, there's been a lot of James Bond movies. Uh, they get the boat from Lou Wendell Marine. So. That's unconfirmed. Kind of wild. That's unconfirmed. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. Kind of. Got to yeah. check that out. Yeah. Though. Although it is boat weather this week, we're oh, here. Man. We're in the 80s. Here we go. Yeah. You a boater at all? I like to ride on people's boats. Yeah. That's that way. I don't have to pay for it. Correct. I don't have to take care of it. Mm-hmm. So you know. Correct. That's what he does. Yeah. yeah. The father-in-law's got one, and he <laughs> he finds his way into the. A moocher. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. 100 percent. Absolutely. Boat moocher. Yeah. Boat. That's fine. I mean, it's a good way. Anyway, whether you want a mooch, a pontoon, or whatever way you want to do it, Lou Wendell Marine Sales happens to be the premier pontoon boat dealer in our state and selection right now at a seasonal high, so check it out. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. I, I feel privileged to be here. I've just heard so much about three guys. Well, well you're only privileged for about 15 more <laughs> seconds, and you'll yeah, understand that, it's that not it a done. privilege. Yeah. <laughs> she, she heard a lot about three guys because last week we were on the coach's caravan. And the uh, director of athletics and the head football coach, I mean, I mean, I was delighted that they kept bringing it up, but they brought it up a lot. And so they've kind of kind of greased the skit. There were, I mean, there were some was atta- it presented in the proper light, though? No. Yeah. No. Uh, Those two took it in a different direction than yeah. what its intent of the show is. They they tend to think that this is some kind of a money laundering organization. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I wish, and, and here I am. I wish it was. <laughs> I mean, I think Neil's got it in his head that we make like between 1.2, 1.3 billion dollars a year on three guys before the game. Also unconfirmed. I mean, so anyway, we're just yeah, we're we're, we're delighted to have you. So doing the math here, almost six months, not quite yet six months. Hired the 20th of December. We're recording um, on the 20th of May, and so this has been. Fill in the blank. Six months of what? Oh, boy. Um, Six months of uh, hard work. Yeah. I mean, um, got here, moved across the country, um, got our daughter in school, um, and just started training and and recruiting. Um, So kind of drinking out of that fire hose, for sure. Um, Not the first time that we have rebuilt um and we know that takes hard work but it's it's fun at the same time and and everybody around uh morgantown and west virginia has been great so far yeah 
So I find it incredibly interesting because, to be quite honest with you, like, I would be a little bit, like, concerned if you had to come in and do this and had never done anything like this. But you did this once before, which begs two questions. Why in the world? <laughs> why, 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 why am I why, so dumb? Why, why, what, <laughs> he's, what, he's trying to be nice. What, what didn't you learn the first time you did it to say, like, right? I'm never going to do that again? So at Washington State, and again, we're going to bounce all over the place, but when you inherited Washington State, you were very familiar with the program. You had been a player there. You had been an assistant coach there. You left. You became a, a, a head coach um, at a smaller school. Then you come back, and they were 0-18. Mm-hmm. And so, obviously, the first time you did it was because you had, like, Washington State pride and love. I'm going to come back to my alma mater. You had nothing here. You had nothing yep, to draw yep. you here to say, like, <laughs> I'm going to go do that in Morgantown. So what was it that kind of flipped the switch? Yeah. Um, you know, Dick Bennett, uh, if you're familiar legendary. with Dick Bennett, Legendary mm-hmm. basketball coach, um, you know, built a Wisconsin basketball up, went to a final four and he did not like that part of it. He, he liked the building part, you know, he was a teacher. Um, so he retired and then, um, he was hired at Washington state and that's when, uh, him and his son, Tony Bennett, um, started coaching together. And we spent a lot of time with Dick Bennett and he just said, you know, just being, uh, my background as a teacher, I love that building process. And, um, you know, we were kind of going through that at Washington State as well and and got to, um, you know, eight straight NCAA um, tournaments, uh, Sweet 16. And um, I think Dick is right. You know, it's that you kind of lose that, um, you know, joy of teaching and and seeing people's progress and, um, you know, that kind of thing. When you get there and you're just trying to recruit those top, top tier players um it just becomes a lot of it seems like pressure mm-hmm. and not as fun um and then the pac-12 you know dissolved and, uh, and all that stuff that we might get into and so why i'm here but um we just being um an educational background um that teaching part of it is really really rewarding so it's probably like being a female and you have a baby and you lose your mind and think like, oh, that wasn't so bad. And then, so you go and do it again. And you're like, well, that was dumb. Um, so, uh, you know, just a little bit of that. But also, yeah, um, yeah just um, uh, the challenge um, of building a program and and having people say, oh, it can't be done. And, and we'll prove you're wrong. For yeah, sure. that, that's pretty fascinating because, I mean, you take a look at your run there at Washington State. Your best year, as far as wins goes, was last year. Mm-hmm. So, like, you literally did do the walk off. You didn't leave it down in the ditch. You you led the walk off, and so that in itself was like every reason why not to stay. I've been to eight straight NCAA's. I've got my most wins ever. I got this thing cooking, and instead you pop the move. And so, to me, that's kind of uh, that's intriguing. Yeah, um, you know, and timing was right. Uh, we graduated eight seniors. Um, our daughter um, is in eighth grade. Um, so if you're going to make a move like that, you know, that's the time that we think to do mm-hmm. it. Um, and then the whole Pac-12 situation of, um, you know, Washington State is no longer in a power for a conference and we want to be in the fire. Uh, we want to compete against the best um, and eventually go w- win a national championship. So to be able to do that, we just felt we needed to be um, in one of these power conferences. Let's talk about that conference stuff for just a second, because how outrageous that that happened, right? For such a proud, long-standing conference that had so much success and has this year, right? As it's on its way out the door, oh. has had a ton of success. As someone that's an alum, spent your, your coaching career there, just thoughts on that, on, on what that means for college athletics to watch that conference dissolve like it did. Yeah, I mean, it was incredible in a very bad and, right. and sad way. Um, you know, we knew... USC was probably behind it all, and, and uh, you know, they made the move first, and UCLA followed. Um, and we kind of thought, okay, we'll be fine, you know, as a conference. 
Um, and then you just kind of heard rumblings. And, you know, I, I just think, um, you know, leadership wise at the conference level, it was never good um, and never real stable. And everybody just kind of um, decided to look out for themselves, which I understand you have to do. Um, but yeah, hundred and some years of tradition just down the drain, um, you know, and for what? I mean, it's crazy. Think of Stanford and, and Cal being in the ACC. Like, how ridiculous outrageous. is that? It's outrageous. 100%. <laughs> it's like, it's outrageous. nobody is thinking about this. Um, you know, and I don't know. The next five years are going to be really interesting um, in college athletics to see if it, you know, if football breaks off and, and everybody goes back to regionality or what happens with the ACC. But um we're just glad to be here in, in the Big 12, and um, we feel that that's pretty stable. All right, fast forward to moving personally to mm -hmm. this part of the country. Yeah. That had to be a, a change and a shock to the system, never mind getting used to the Eastern time zone here. Oh, but I know. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Still it's don't tough think for watching I am. sports, right? Yeah. It's tough yeah. for watching sports I out know. here. Um, so, yeah, uh, made the move. We've never lived um, on the East Coast. I was born in Chicago. My dad's from Chicago. Um, but then uh, he went to college in Montana. That's where my mom's from. So... Uh, they just kind of kept moving west, and, and I've never uh, moved um, in any time zone ex except the Pacific. Wow. Um, she's, so, been three, she's been three hours behind her whole yeah, life. Her whole <laughs> life. <laughs> yep. So you're exactly right. You know, we'd be, we lived in the, the wonderful residence inn for 30 days, and, <laughs> as, as uh, all of us uh, those coaches have. Um, but yeah, same thing, you know, NCAA basketball is going on and we had morning practice and I'm like, I cannot stay up to watch any more games. And, and it's a real thing of that East Coast bias. Yeah. So now I'm part of it. I, I feel stronger just you yeah, know, you're better being off. here. Yeah, you're better off for it. <laughs> what happened to Washington State has always been kind of one of our fears because there are similarities just size wise mm -hmm. between right WVU and WSU, right? Yeah, I mean, I've only mixed that up once since I've been here, well, which I good. think now, I mean, it's pretty good. That's now, pretty do you good. guys go with that a lot, a lot of WSU out yeah, there? Yeah, you know, like even just emails, yeah. you know, like wsu.edu. Yeah, same yeah, thing. Now yeah. it's wvu.edu, so I've yeah. only messed it up once. So, so we always look at it like when the Big East blew up and West Virginia made this move to the Big 12, like – we were in some serious fear. We didn't want to become Connecticut because mm -hmm. someone was going to get left out. And you saw what happened to Connecticut football through right. the years. It just it, it, it crushed it. So um, I'm sure as an alum, you have to feel horrible right now to look back there and see what's happening to those folks. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and, and we still obviously know you know, everybody that's working mm -hmm. there and, and, you know, you go from 30 plus million a year of TV revenue to I'm hearing you know, four to five. Um, and how, like, how do you sustain that? Um, and so it's, it's really sad, um, for sure being an alum, but, um, we are so glad that we're here at, at West Virginia and you're exactly right. There's a lot of similarities. Um, you know, the college town land grant, um, institutions. I am not a city girl. Um, so Morgantown is big to me. I'm like, oh my gosh, all this traffic and, and there's really? multiple places to eat. I can't even, you know, so how big how big's Pullman? It is small, like 34,000 with the students. Oh, okay, with okay. the students. Mm -hmm. okay. I mean, we got a Walmart and so know, kinda... a couple of restaurants, and, and that's it. So you always have been punching above your weight class as a coach there. No matter who coaches there is punching above their yep, weight class. Yep, exactly. Yeah, so that kind of, I talked about it, that chip on your shoulder. Um, you know, you have to have that kind of attitude, and I think – um, that's why West Virginia is such a great fit um, for us because it's it's a little bit of the same thing, you know. Um, it's it's not a volleyball powerhouse, yeah. You know, it's hard to get to all of those things, you know, that we're already used to. So um, we're just gonna try and and do what we can and take it and run with it. Uh, jumping down in now. So would you consider yourself who is fueled by being an underdog throughout your life? Uh, yep, absolutely. Um. And, you know, my dad was my high school basketball coach, track coach. I have two older brothers, um, you know, that beat me up pretty good on the, on the basketball court and, and um, you know, helped me along the way. Um, but I think, you know, we were from a small school. Um, I had 42 people in my graduating class, um, and we would play the big dogs. You know, we would play the, the big schools and go out there um, and beat them. And um, I think it's just that competitive nature and being that – you know, just underdog and, and really enjoying that part of it. All right, so here comes now some matters of disclosure for the record. 
pretty good in basketball. I'm pretty. Let me ask you this, Brad. You're a basketball I'm guy. Probably underselling this. Well, I mean, I'm just going to ask you a question. Yeah, pretty good is not the right term. <laughs> Are you pretty good if you're the all-time leader in the state of Washington, boys and girls? Very good. Are you pretty good in basketball if you were top five recruit in the country, the top five national recruit in the country? I'd be considered elite. Yeah. And instead, when it was over with in high school, you went like, nah, not going to play. I'm going to go volleyball. Hold yep. on. Before you answer that, to help the, the younger listeners, who who broke your scoring record? Yeah, Haley Van Lith. Haley so Van Lith. So I held it for, I don't know, that was like 23 years or something That's awesome. like that. Wow. How many yeah. points did you score? 2,000, 3,000? What did you score? Um, 2,881. <laughs> To be exact. <laughs> well, I mean, if you have that record, you know the number. Absolutely. You know you the that, number. Right. Yeah. 2,800 on shirts. So, uh, so Haley Van Lith got it finally. Yep. That's a she heck did. Of a player. She did. Right. LSU last year, formerly of Louisville. Yeah. Yep. Just imagine what you could have done in NIL with what she's oh doing. Oh, my gosh. With NIL. I know. Yeah. yeah. So you're tall. Uh, you're 6'2. Tell me about your basketball game. Like, where were you scoring? You, were you, I, was you three. I was a three. I was a three. Oh. Mm hmm. Yeah, seriously, I, seriously. So you oh, could yeah. handle, you could, could step yep. and face the basket. Absolutely, you could Threes. stick the jump shot. Yep. Oh, yep. you were so, so you were up. You were difficult to handle. I was difficult. Yeah, Match and up we problem. and we pressed um, like crazy and just ran. I, we averaged like seventy three points a game. So our, awesome. as our as a team. So, so who, how big was your center? Um, she was. Not as tall as But you were, at, but yeah. you, you, it yeah. was your athleticism that Yeah, she was you probably six foot. But okay. I just, you know, but I played on a um, an AAU team, and that's, we had a 6'7 center and a 6'5 um, four. And right. Why wouldn't you? Yeah, four of them went to Stanford and played. Um, and I was a year younger than all of them. Um, and so, you know, Tara Vanderveer sitting in my living room and, um, you know, went to Stanford camp a couple of times. But if I was going to play basketball... Um, this throws everybody off a little bit as well. Um, if I was going to play basketball, um, North Carolina had just won it in 1994, mm -hmm. um, and they had one scholarship to give. Sylvia Hatchell? Yep. Right? They had one scholarship to give, and they offered me. I had my visit all set up, and at the last second said, I think I'm going to play volleyball. So, <laughs> Why? <laughs> oh, gosh. Good question. Um, I think I was a little burnt out uh, yeah. of basketball like I had just done it and done it and done yep. it and I was like this volleyball game is, is pretty fun um you know I had played in high school went to some camps but never played club or anything like that um went to Washington State camp um really enjoyed the coaches I ended up getting recruited by Notre Dame um Arizona Washington State Washington Oregon and Oregon State were my volleyball schools just because they were a little more regional um, so I went on those visits and then ultimately chose Washington State, um, close to home. They had an unbelievable atmosphere. Um, they were winning um, and kind of thought, oh, you know, I'll, I'll give this a try. I, you know, I did end up playing one year of basketball at Washington State. My, Your first year? My last year. Okay. Did you, yeah. in that interim, before you went to play basketball, you, you missed it? Did you I regret? Did, miss it. did you regret the decision though, yeah. or you just missed it? Um, or do you I regret didn't re it now? I absolutely now? didn't regret um, the decision. I missed it. Uh huh. Um, but then I played my senior year, and I was like, oh my god, I don't miss it anymore because I could have played, you know, a fifth year, and I was like, no, I'm done. So. So that's probably good that you played that year to yep. get that out of your system, yep, right? So you're not sure. sitting here today going, well, yeah, well. Yeah. I could have yep. been a contender. I could, yep. <laughs> could have been a contender if I just would have played. It's crazy. So did you? was there organized volleyball before high oh, school? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. I mean, there was club going on. and um, like for, for you? Me, for me playing? For no. You. No. no. I just was like You just picked it up when leg. it was volleyball yeah. season and yeah. let's play. Yep. Totally. Yeah. Isn't that you, mentioned your yeah. you mentioned your brothers. Yeah. They're really big. I am taller than both of them by like Serious. we're all about the same, but I think I caught him by about you know half an inch or something. My mom's five one; oh. she's tiny. Um, okay, so what's how tall's your dad? Give me the yeah. three. Six, six, seven. Okay. There you um, go. There you go. Yeah, so I kind of just uh, beat out the brothers a, a little bit. Uh, my mom was a barrel racer in Montana. She's a feisty <laughs> little bugger. Yeah, talk about chip on your shoulder. That is her. Yeah. Um, and then my my dad played at Carroll College. Uh, um, in Helena, Montana basketball, but, um, yeah, but my brothers, you know, both played basketball at, um, junior college. Um, they both coached. Um, so, you know, I was kind of just 
in a gym from the time I could, you know, breathe. <laughs> so that's really super interesting. So your dad's a coach, your mom competitive. So you're in an environment growing up of we compete. Yes. Yeah, and, and, and obviously you would agree that that has, that, that set your course. Yep, I, I knew from probably my freshman year in high school that I wanted to coach. Um, wow, and so, that's young. Young, yeah, and so I went just, I thought, it, but I thought I was going to be a teacher and a high school coach. You know, I just was like, this is what we do, and, and so went and got my elementary ed um, degree at Washington State, but like was working camps um, from the time I could, um, you know, and then all through college, of course, um, you know, all summer working camps. So um, definitely knew that that's what I wanted to do. Pretty good in the classroom. She mentioned uh, Washington, Notre Dame, you were an academic All-American. I was. I mean, I was an elementary ed major, so <laughs> I wasn't, I'll, I'll I'm not a nuclear uh, scientist. Or well, something. I, mean, I, I, <laughs> I worked hard uh, <laughs> at my billboard making. And doesn't mean whatever. you couldn't have been a nuclear scientist. You just chose to go <laughs> right. elementary education. I mean, true, I, true. Just go with it. Just, what, what okay, was you're, it? He's trying to make me look go, good. Go with so the I need to, I mean, How I, did I, you know that, that you wanted to be a coach? Your dad was obviously coaching yeah. you, as you said, so you uh -huh. saw it. Yep. But do you remember a moment, or you just always thought, I want to be in charge. Is it being yeah. in charge? What no, was it? Not a, I probably, my husband would probably say. That, Said you want to be in charge. I want to be in charge. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Um, but no, I just think, um, you know, that I, I just liked the atmosphere of being in the gym, teaching, like the excitement of competing. Like, you don't really get that when you just go to work. No, you're you right. Get, um, no, you're you know, right. that nine to five or, or whatever that is. Yeah. Like, you get to go compete and and you know get those juices flowing or, or whatever it is and then just also making people better yeah. at if they're hungry for that it's really fun to see no oh, it's in com competitions intoxicating mm -hmm. yes right yep and i would also probably guess alive that uh, the this is always a good coach you look you remember the losses more than you remember the wins yep absolutely no one's just, no one's different on that category no nope. and so you can't accept the fun part of it you always look right <laughs> yeah i know that's the thing like you you don't know how many wins you have but you know how many losses um you know so you know i i think um because that's how we want to get better you know you don't want those losses uh you want to knock those out um but you know we, we have celebrated some big wins as well but mm -hmm. it's usually then looking on to the next pretty quick your coaching staff i i'm, I'm assuming this is the only one in the country. Yes. It is, right? Yep. Uh, okay. So one of your assistant coaches is your husband. Mm -hmm. And your other two assistant coaches are married. <laughs> I mean, I know, we're you, just keeping it all in the family. <laughs> you talk You talk about a made for a reality television show. It's called Married with Volleyball. And so, okay, let's talk about your husband. Yep. Burdett. Uh, Professional. Hold on real quick. Did you tell Jen this might be a four-hour podcast? <laughs> There's a lot of stuff here. Well, Does she her, wear the time or not really? Well, you just said, we're, we're, we're I got not, It's off okay, season. Good. I got okay, nothing go to ahead. do. Continue on the line of question. We <laughs> might be here a she while. Had, she had recruits this weekend. There, nothing, yeah, nothing, yeah, this is the off day. Nothing going on here, off day. Um, let's, let's talk about your husband, as I said. Uh, professional baseball player and, and is, your, is your right arm as far as coaching. Uh, where'd you guys meet? Yep, so he played baseball at Washington State, so that's where we met. Um, we joke, like, in the weight room, you know. Um, he was always trying to mooch a ride home, you know, <laughs> talking about mooching, um, you know, because our apartments were kind of in the same area, so, you know, that's how we met. Probably an ulterior motive yeah, there for him, right? Probably, I mean, he probably wasn't just probably, the ride. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that, that's how we met, and then he um, signed into the Brewers organization, played three years, um, minor league ball and then we were back in Pullman I was an assistant coach um, at Washington State for volleyball he was working in the athletic department and you know coaching legion baseball all summer we we're kind of you know just going in different directions um, I was pregnant with our first daughter Lauren um, and so decided to step away from the college game for a while then I coached at Pullman High School um, and taught for three years um, and then um, a old baseball coach had become the athletic director at Lewis Clark State, a, a small NAIA school in Lewiston, Idaho. And he approached 
me twice. I turned it down. The third time he came back, I was like, you know, I'll take it if I can bring this guy, you know, with me who doesn't really know volleyball, but at a small school, you do everything yourself. You know, right. you're, you're your own strength coach, you're your own academic advisor, you do everything. And so um, the AD, because he knew him pretty well from baseball, was like, yep, let's try it. Um, thought it was maybe going to last a year. And now we've been doing it together 17 years. Um, and he loves the recruiting part. Absolutely loves it. I can take it or leave it. I'm like, do you want to come or not? You know, like, and he's on the phone for an hour, an hour and a half, you know. Um, so it, it worked out. I taught him volleyball. Now he's dangerous. Um, he was national assistant coach of the year at Washington State um, for the AVCA in 2018, I think. So now I can't get rid of him. I've That's tried. Awesome. That's an <laughs> unbelievable story. Yeah. Yes. So. so see, yeah, that's that's super interesting because the thing you wouldn't expect is you would say like, well, he loves the fundamentals of the game and that's the, his, but no, he likes to recruit. Mm -hmm. Yep, he loves the recruiting part and he digs in, um, you know, to like blocking is kind of his specialty and, um, and serving, um, but he was a pitcher. And so actually the, it really, really um, is a lot of the same mechanics um, in your volleyball mm -hmm. arm swing as pitching. Um, so it, it's fascinating actually, um, that like younger kids that are just learning volleyball, we, we teach them how to throw, you know, if they don't know, like girls, you know, if you're not out with your dad or, or your brothers or whatever, throwing a baseball correctly, you know, we're going to give you a tennis ball or a baseball and you're going to be throwing the ball for your, um, mechanics, um, as, as a hitter. So fascinating that it overlaps like that were, were you surprised or are you surprised now so what 17 years you've been coaching together yes are, are you stunned that it's that that's the path he took as well yeah I'm um, for sure I mean we were kind of at that you know cross crossing point of like is he maybe going to go coach baseball and you know what am I going to do or whatnot and we just you know thought you know let's try it and and didn't really think that we would jump from an NAIA school to the pac 12 um and then be here at west virginia today obviously and have done so well yeah. um you know throughout the process Remarkable. your other two assistants are the beckers yes so talk a little bit about how that tandem yeah um you know when you're looking for a, a new staff um you're getting recommendations all over the place um and actually uh, mike becker um had been at Pitt, and he's from pennsylvania so we knew we wanted some east coast connections um just because we hadn't lived out here. Um, so he was kind of the first call. And as we were doing research, we're like, wait, he's married. <laughs> and they coached together at Iowa. <laughs> okay, this could work. And so we kind of started calling um, about them separately. So Mike had been at Pitt and then um, was at um, Illinois State. And they had done really well. That coach then went to Michigan State. He followed her. Um, Aubrey was at Florida State. And then Brown, Davidson, Oral Roberts, and then Iowa. And so they ended up, because they got married, um, you know, they had met just out on the volleyball recruiting trail or, or whatnot. And they got married and were both working at Iowa. We're like, that's a lot of just different uh, places that they've both been with great um, connections and whatnot. So separately, they're yeah. fabulous. They just happen to be married <laughs> as well. The, so we're uh, like, this is crazy. The state of Iowa is having a tough census year <laughs> here for West Virginia up big in the census department. I, Iowa has suddenly become like the fulcrum of the universe. Yeah. Yes. Right? Like DeVries, yep. that whole, that group's yep. coming so in. So thanks, and, uh, Iowa. Nick Norton is coming. Yeah, Nick the, Norton's I mean, coming in. The whole thing. Big lead for West Virginia. <laughs> yeah. In the yep. census department. Absolutely. Is this correct? Someone sent this to me that this weekend, to your knowledge, and you would know this, has a female ever won the NCAA volleyball championship? One has not. It's always been a man. Always been a man. Yep. Um, You're the one, Greeny. I know. That's Greeny, how, let's I mean, go. Why not us? Why, why not? not now? Why not? Yeah. It's pretty wild. It is pretty wild. Um, you know, Mary Weiss has been at Florida for many years, has been to the Final Four a few times, never won it. Um, you know, Louisville has a female head coach, and, and they've been in the Final Four a couple times. Um, you know, San Diego was there a couple of years ago, but just we haven't we haven't done it yet. So I think they're waiting for me. Makes sense. That's what I think. Sounds good. 
Absolutely. <laughs> Volleyball's exploding popularity-wise. We've seen that here in West Virginia with all the club sports that are that are coming up. But that's na- that's nationally, right? That's a that is so nationally. it's a sport that's exploding youth-wise. But it's also along with softball. You notice it on TV too. There's a lot more. I think people are starting to realize what a fun sport it is to watch. People will watch it whether live or on TV. So it's it's coming from youth and television wise. Agree? Yeah, um, it's the number one participation sport uh, for females uh, by a long ways hmm. um, in the United States right now, uh, and it just keeps growing. Um, but you're exactly right. I think um, spectator wise, um, you know, I think Nebraska w- with what they did. Sure. Um, if you guys saw that, you know, they filled ninety two thousand mm-hmm. in their football stadium. Like that is unbelievable. Um, but so cool for the sport and, um, it's getting really popular. We now have a professional league, um, in the U S you know, they've tried a couple of professional leagues, you know, throughout the the nineties and early two thousands that just haven't stuck. I think, I think, um, this one will, um, or, you know, some form of it is going to stick because just people really, really enjoy the sport. It's It's fast, it's fast paced. Um, it's physical, athletic, it's super athletic. Yeah. Um, and again, like a, f- a really family oriented sport that you're always inside. So you don't have to worry about the weather. It's not too long. Mm-hmm. Um, it's always exciting. You know, a point happens on every play. Right. Um, so um, it's just, you know, the, the rules are funky. Uh, I, I have to do a good job of, you know, uh, getting the West Virginians to understand the sport of volleyball because, you know, some of it's like, why do you do this or what's happening? And Sometimes I don't even really know, but um, we'll do our best to, to try and explain it to our fans. What's your favorite candy? A Reese's peanut butter cup. Uh-huh. Interesting you should bring that up, Jen. This is an unrehearsed advertisement. Spring is here, and GoMart wants to help you save some green with Coach Greeny. Satisfy your sweet tooth with 50 cents off of a Reese's King Size bar. You need a post workout pick me up, body armor drinks? Buy two, save a dollar. Plus, rewards members get exclusive deals like buy one, get one on Airheads and Mentos Rolls. That's something I'm, it's a crazy diet I just started, and all I now eat are Airheads and Mentos Rolls. These are just a few of the bargains waiting for you at the GoMart app. Download it today, blossom into big savings with exclusive monthly coupons. Had you not eaten the entire bag of Reese products we were just gifted, we could have given Jen one. As They're upstairs, we still got the big cups. We have a coach down in Raleigh County. We were down in Raleigh County, down yes. Beckley. Uh, coach Montgomery that night gave me a big old bag. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he didn't share it with, with any doesn't. of us. That's his thing. <laughs> That's yeah. his thing. He, yeah, just, he gets, he on gets the stuff plane. on trips all the time. Uh-huh. People say, hey, take this back. This is for every. He uh-huh. never. Yep. Okay, so it's not just me. Never. Now, the Reese's Cups did make it back. Now, he excluded you, but we did get some of those. Dude, I got on the plane. Share. I had a bag from Coach Montgomery. I put it in the aisle on the plane. I said, you guys want some stuff? There's Reese's in here. All I uh-huh. get is, see, they, they turn it. Ren, <laughs> Ren especially turns it. They didn't offer us anything. Yep, yep. You're right. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> On your side. Because I know Ren would have eaten one of those. I don't know. All he does is pour powder into drinks. That's all he does. <laughs> <laughs> he just got all the he's got he's got more electrolytes than he knows what to do with. Your first coaching job was was a little unique. What was it? It was. Um <laughs> Yes, yeah, so I did my my did my student teaching. Um, you know, it was just like trying to figure out, okay, I, I need a job. And like I told you guys, I w- wanted to coach. And um, seventh grade boys basketball. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> so what's funny is Burdett was um, in the minor leagues, so he was off at that time and home. So he, of course, got the eighth grade boys job, you know. I'm liking Burdett here. Yeah. I'm liking so, Burdett here, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> was but, it competitive with you? Well, Did you say? Oh, what yeah, was I was kind of like, why do, why do you get the eighth grade job and I get the seventh grade job? Solid point. The eighth mm-hmm. grade job perceived as the better oh, job yes, at the time, right? Year older, they yeah. knew what they were doing a little yeah. bit more. Yeah. Okay. So these knucklehead seventh grade boys are uh, like, that's all that's, they are. That's too. A, yeah. That's right? a perfect description. Yes. All seventh grade boys. Yeah, they all like, are. They're not like, even going to give an all due respect to seventh grade boys. No, You're just a knucklehead. Sorry, You're just, all knuckleheads. Just knuckleheads. Yes. In the most loving way. Um, you know, they're like, why do we have the girl? Like I could hear him. Yeah. Like, oh. And yeah. I'm just off of playing basketball, yeah. like my year of playing oh, basketball. This is be good. I'm like, mm. so I can hear, why do we have the girl? You know, whatever. I was like, oh, I, I see how it is. Okay, we're going to get in and do a little three on two, two yes. on one. And yeah. 
I might as well just jump in. I like this. Why yeah. jump in? I hope you just swatted shots up. all over the gym. <laughs> You're exactly right. Just start right. spiking people. You know, I've just kind of let them, you know, get into a little flow thinking they're pretty good. Like, yeah, we're, we made the seventh grade boys team. Whatever. And so I, yeah, this one that was kind of mouthing off, like, why do we have the girl? Oh, yeah. Swat. Crying, crash. Them. Swat. Yeah. Very good. Steal the ball. And they were like, yeah, we got the girl. <laughs> So, so that was it. That's so, all it took. So we would, uh, then we scrimmage the eighth grade boys. And, you know, so I get in and Burdett gets in, you know, the seventh grade. We, we won. Um, and so, yeah. Lined up, beat Burdett. Yep, yep. Burdett's <laughs> so out there trying the, to throw, the cur- yeah. Burdett's trying to throw curveballs from the foul line. That's, <laughs> yep. not, that's not working at all. So it's, it's a massive difference between where you are now and that. <laughs> Sometimes. <Right? laughs> so I feel like so, where, so let's kind of talk about both of those. The part of your coaching that is skill development versus mental is what? Can you put that in a percentage? Yeah. I mean, I I think we do a really, really good job of the skill development. Because even at Washington State, you know, we're going against right. Stanford, USC, UCLA. These are volleyball powerhouses. Um, and we're not getting those recruits. We just weren't. Mm-hmm. So we have to train better. Um, and so that's what I think we did. We would take maybe, you know, not the blue chip, maybe right under that or whatnot and, um, really develop them. Um, but so I'd say 70, 30, but they're still heavy skill development, still heavy. Yeah. Skill development, but that mental side of it and mostly just competitiveness, um, you know, is what I think and, and team chemistry can really put you over the top. Okay. So how do you bring out or instill competitiveness because you can see right away when kids have it and when they don't Mm -hmm. how do you get that out what are some do you compete every day or at everything and just force them into situations where they have to compete is that the best thing to do yeah i think i think so i mean no matter what we're doing we're trying to um be fast paced and um you know and compete and have that mentality so even if we're in the weight room um you know or whatever that is warming up um, just to have that attitude of um you know, we're going to do it better today than, than somebody else. Everyone's practicing, right? Everybody's practicing. What kind of attitude can we have um, going into that, that we're going to be a little bit better than somebody else? You just unintentionally defined the success recipe for West Virginia University sports. You're never going to, you're never going to live off of five-star blue collar, blue chip players. But we're always, always had the ability to take that one person that's got some form of a chip on their shoulder that wasn't recruited by their in-state favorite school. Oh, yeah, come here. Mm-hmm. And you made a living off of those by skill development and then teaching them the blue-collar attitude and putting that chip on their shoulder, and they use it for fuel. Absolutely. So, yeah, that's why when Ren called – and I was kind of like, I don't even really know where West Virginia is. No offense. <laughs> you know, I'm just like when Ren called, um, just talking to him um, as well about what uh, West Virginia University is. I was like, oh, yeah, we've done this is totally the same thing we've always done. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I think it's a great fit and we love it. And, you know, I talked about this a little bit. Coaches Caravan, what you had just said, we've got really high standards in our gym and in our program. And uh, we've kind of taken on a, a little motto um, for West Virginia volleyball. Listen to this. Um, listen to this. T- I know. I, I, I have this to trademark awesome. this. Um, is I can't use it. Gold standard, blue collar. Um, really so, uh, you know, and I think that fits just perfect. I mean, we've been talking to all our, our recruits about that. And, and if y- that's not what they want, well, then that's okay. They can go find whatever it is that they do want. But that's what we're going to be here at West Virginia. And, and we want those recruits um, coming in that want that as well. I love that. Cause we can't use it, but, like, who created that? Who thought a gold standard blue collar? Who was yeah, it? It, it's, it's Burdett. Yeah. So, again, wh- that's why I got to keep him around. <laughs> that was really good. <laughs> really good. Because that I mean, says if it he's all. Recru- if he can recruit at a high level and bring you slogans, I mean, I that's know, a- right? Yeah. Big slogan guy. Big slogan guy. Big slogan guy. <laughs> but if I find out, Burdette, that you went to chat GPT and came <laughs> up with that, we're going to have a doggone problem. What's the biggest mistake as you're around now and you're recruiting and you're watching and we've talked about how this sport is growing? What's the biggest mistake youth coaches make with the younger kids that creates problems as they get older? Oh, man. Um, I think what I just said, like trying to get somebody to fit um, that doesn't really fit. You know, um, just that you have to have that mentality if you're going to be 
successful with us, like we're really competitive coaches. And if that's, if you're just really good and, and that's just really not your style, then, then we as coaches are just going to be frustrated and you are going to be frustrated with us coaches. And again, that's hard. You're going to miss at times, you know, some kids going to say like, I'm really competitive and they get here and you're like, no, your mom's really competitive or your dad's really competitive. You not so much. Um, but, you know, I, th I think it's trying to, you know, fit a, a round peg into a square mm -hmm. hole or, or vice versa. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we have to spend that time getting to know them and, and figure out what, what it is they are really like. That's what I was just going to say. So you dig into the competitiveness mm -hmm. part of right. it as you're recruiting someone. Yeah. To see if they've got it. Yep. And, and watch, you know, um, we, we also don't like to just watch off a film. You know, somebody can put together a great highlight mm -hmm. reel. Like, we got to go see them in person and we've done a lot of uh, foreign recruiting um, as well and same thing they can't just send us the film like we got to go see them with uh, our own two eyes and see how they react when they make mistakes and and how they treat their parents and you know all of the above sure sure the old west virginia saying if you got to teach a hunting dog how to hunt you don't have a hunting dog yep and same thing in sports if you've got to teach someone to compete you got no shot right Yep, no shot at all. And um, like I said, they have to be able to make um, adjustments. You know, if you're a player that really struggles making adjustments, like I said, you know, we're not getting those top, top recruits. So we have to teach and you have to be able to, to learn and, and make adjustments. Um, I think that's something else that we uh, have realized throughout our years um, as well. Like, and so that's a question now. How fast do you make adjustments? Mm-hmm um handicap the big the new big 12 conference because what's wild is for these schools you intimately know yes. you've been playing against them for all these years um handicap this league as you get ready to jump in oh man uh, you know i'm just i'm like you said i'm really only familiar with those four schools um but you know now that texas and, and oklahoma are gone i think um at least tech the texas part of it is good um for the conference, it, it definitely opens it up. Kansas has been great. Um, I think Arizona State could possibly win it this year. Mm. Um, you know, they have our setter from Washington State. She transferred there, um, and she um, plays, starts for the Mexican national team, and they have almost everybody back. Um, so, you know, I think our goals um, are just, we're just trying to get to the middle. You know, West Virginia Volleyball has been last or second to last um but but we can knock some people off uh, i think for sure and, and our goal is just to try and get to the middle um, and then just keep climbing recruiting wise once you get things set as far as get your roster and this is you're going to do it on the quick this year are there enough players geographically in this region that you'll be able to at least have the majority of your kids from a three to 400 mile distance, or are you going to continue to have to go bouncing all over the place? Yeah. You know, I think we'll probably have to continue to bounce, um, for a while, just until we get the West Virginia volleyball name, um, a little more recognizable. Um, you know, we've, we're recruiting Canada right now pretty heavily. Um, where's good, where is good volleyball in Canada? Yeah. East or West? Um, East. East. Yeah. So, so Toronto that's, yep, up that's in there. helpful for us here. Mm -hmm. um, Ohio has great volleyball, but they also have a lot of schools. Yeah. Um, you know, we have a great setter coming in um, from Texas in 2025, like comes from the number one club in the country. Um, and then I think we'll continue to go foreign a, a little bit as well. But, um, you know, I think Florida is really um, becoming a hotbed of volleyball uh, right now. We have the DC area that has just some tremendous athletes. So, um, I think for sure, comparatively um, at Washington State, being at West Virginia and just the population um, of the East Coast it is much uh, better to be here. Stupid question, but wouldn't be my first. <laughs> like in basketball, we know what kind of size you have to have for a team. You know, we know you need to have a certain number of, you know, six, seven wings and you need to have some size. Like on a volleyball roster, in your mind, like what, what sizes do you need to have success at the level you want to? Yeah, we, we definitely need to get bigger and, and more physical. Um, you know, I think 6'3", six, 6'4", six, um, for our hitters is great, um, unless they're 
um, a little shorter, but super springy. Mm -hmm. um, so we so we kind of go off the jump test, uh, the jump, you know, touch test. So not necessarily how tall they are, but how high they can. So touch vertical. Verticals. Um, yep, yeah, we just got a, a transfer in that touches 10.6. Um, so, you know, if we can go 10.3 to, to 10.8, then 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 we're get, then we're going somewhere. So. And what's crazy about that, and this is for any sport, like, so if you're, what you're looking for demographically doesn't exist a whole lot in the world. You're looking for 6'3 and 6'4 <laughs> females. Yes. And it's kind of like, that could jump 10 plus. Yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, it's kind of like reach 10 plus. offensive linemen. Mm -hmm. Like, what are you looking for? Well, we're looking for people that can be 300 and 310 to 20 pounds, and they yep. need to have great, you yep. know, agility and bounce. They don't. They're, it's like looking for dinosaurs, right? They, they're <laughs> not a whole lot unicorns, of unicorns. Yes, unicorns. Yeah. So that's why the relationships, I would imagine, are so big at these clubs because they would have the closest access to being able to go, hey, Jen, mm -hmm. over there. Yep, absolutely. And, uh, you know, people are playing club, you know, from 12 years old, and those club coaches are going, oh, yeah, she's going to be tall or mm -hmm. she's going to be good. And, and um, it does feel a little bit weird when you're watching 14-year-olds you know, uh, play, but you can tell pretty early on, um, even if they don't quite have the volleyball skill, because it's a very, very technical game. Um, you know, me playing both sports, volleyball is way harder, way harder than basketball. How about that? Um, and you just you can't hide, you know, like you, you can't just go in and I'm just going to set a screen and rebound, you know, like the ball is coming to you. Like they're going to find you. They'll find you. Yeah. Um, so you can't hide anybody. Um, so just those younger kids too, um, you know, that agility and, and a whippy arm and, and pretty tall, uh, you can tell pretty, pretty early on. You mentioned your daughter. She's enrolled at Morgantown. So um, she's coming. Yes. Yeah, so we have two daughters actually. Um, our oldest daughter, um, is a, uh, just finished her sophomore year at Montana State. She's on the women's golf team. I am not a golfer. She is a really good golfer. Um, she played volleyball and basketball and baseball, did everything, tore her meniscus her freshman year, got surgery, um, you know, repair it. So she was out for a while and, and she comes to me in the spring and is bored and is like, Mom, can I, you know, try out for the golf team? I'm like, oh, yeah, sweetie, sure. Like, go for it. I bought her Walmart clubs, like, you know, here, uh, she makes it to state her freshman year. Like she hadn't even golfed 18 holes before, like just had kind of screwed around, you know, uh, with Burdette or whatever. Um, went to state her freshman year. It was getting back into playing a lot of some beach volleyball and COVID hit. And so you, no on the West coast, you couldn't do anything, but we lived right next to Idaho. Um, they had junior golf, um, that summer she played, started getting recruited for golf. And so then we said, now you're a golfer. So <laughs> you don't have a choice because <laughs> you got a scholarship. <laughs> um, great parents we are. Um, so she just was honorable mention, big sky, her sophomore year. Um, and so that's what she's doing, she's but our a, youngest, yeah. um, so she's short for our family at five eleven. um, a golfer. And so Leah, our youngest, um, is at Suncrest Middle School right now. She'll um, enroll at Morgantown High um, in the fall. Um, but she's a little taller than me, so 6'2", and a volleyballer. Um, but Mark Kellogg keeps trying to get, get her to play basketball. So uh, she's dabbling uh, in basketball a little bit right now. This isn't fair to do this, but, okay, take your mom hat off. She got it? Yeah, she's pretty good. She's good. Yeah. yeah. I'll tell you what, good. these new coaches – Kellogg brings Kellogg brings a hooper. I know Morgantown yeah, High right? is like yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Kellogg brings a hooper plus his son, very good, good golfer. Um, Coach DeVries, he's got a daughter that plays as well. We got some athletes, you know, in the mix here, yeah. football wise. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of, that that is always kind of a wild thing too. Huh? It is. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned like your dad. Uh, your dad, you know, has you kids. Your kids are successful athletically. Now your kids are successful. Just kind of, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Yeah. So good thing he wasn't an accountant. <laughs> yeah. I mean, no kidding. Become accountants. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, we like need, this we need route a little There's better. There's nothing wrong with accountants. <laughs> no. No. I, we, we love accountants. Well, no. There is something wrong with accountants when you're trying to play sports. <laughs> you're just you need athletes when you're trying to play sports. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm yeah. saying. So. so she's over there. She's over at Suncrest with the Seals. She's going to become a Mohegan. Well known. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So far, how's that adjustment going? Oh, great. She 
she, she was she in, was huh? ready to to move and and take on i mean i like i told you Pol- in pullman there wasn't a whole lot and i was like you know what there's two chick-fil-a's and a target she was sold <laughs> <laughs> I, did it. You, I mean you can't go wrong with the chick-fil-a's and target you yeah i mean she's 14. yeah perfect like, come on hey, hey listen brad i'll attest to this you would be stunned like 20 years ago people used to walk openly here in the streets and just go like why can't we get a red lobster like that's <laughs> all we was how about olive garden and they just they came like rabbits mm-hmm. it's just all of a sudden they just went right <laughs> you remember that I yes i mean it, like we didn't have anything and then all of a sudden just went everything's here yep everything <laughs> yeah i've spent a lot of money <laughs> i've spent a lot of money in this great town <laughs> yeah so you came in december so you haven't seen fall yet I have not. Wait I mean, we came. Fall. Yeah, we came in December where there were oh, no leaves ugly. on the trees. It's ugly. We're like, it's gonna get better, <laughs> right? A, no, yeah. it does. It's, it's, it's has, great. Right? It's better it, yeah. now. It's oh, now it's you can great. see it. It's yeah, great. yeah, it's pretty. It, it gets pretty, and then in the fall, when all those beautiful leaves change colors, you get the, yeah. and you're gonna be busy then. But yeah. at least at some point, jump out there and just kind of do a little tour. You even go to Cooper's Rock and just yeah. kind of look around there. You go like, ooh, this is pretty. Yeah, it's been great. Yeah, uh, food wise. Uh, if my memory serves correct from last week, you said you don't like to cook. It's, it's fine. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I would rather fine. have the invite from yeah. Tony. <laughs> yeah. No, that's <laughs> He's fine. He's showing me pictures. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. I we, mean, I, I like to have people over to the house yeah. and, and entertain, but I'm like, I'm busy. Yeah. No, <laughs> I, know, I get it. I'm I get busy. it. And so <laughs> you guys are, you guys are almost getting, you're getting close to finishing up a house. But you said something else interesting to me, like, you're like, I don't care. Burdette, take mm-hmm. care of it. Yep. Just tell me when it's done. I'll move in. Yeah. So we've built, this is, this will be our fourth house. So that's what people say. Like, yeah, the most stressful things in a marriage are, you know, working together, building a house, moving, <laughs> moving. across the country. <laughs> yeah, we've done it all. We're doing it all. Uh, but he... Uh, kind of like with the whole like slogan and um, you know he loves the design piece of it I think yeah. like he really wanted to be an architect uh, but he's like that's way too much math for me and uh, you know I'm a baseball guy I'm not doing that um, but he loves the design piece of it and so I'm just like you do it like I'll make sure it's in the budget and and I, there's a few things that I want and like where's my wine fridge and, yeah. and uh, a couple of uh, logistical things but other than that he's like you want this tile or this tile and i'm like they like, look the same to me Go like whatever yeah. you know looks great yeah. do it so uh you know we've got to make some choices this week so that we can get that buttoned up and and move in a couple more topics i want to get into three guys before the game is brought to us by comax business systems they happen to be west virginia's well they're west virginia's dudes like for example Let's just say Jen's got this great database full of recruiting information, right, Brad? She does not want someone to come in there and steal her very important data, correct? You would not want that. No. Comax Business Systems will provide remote IT services for you, and they'll come in and do a complete audit to make sure that your network is safe and secure. So check them out. We call that a computer colonoscopy they'll come in there check everything out everything's good it's good if not they'll make a Slogans. recommendation great. and it's uh, not really their official slogan he just, <laughs> no, I, he just yeah they haven't added. approved they haven't yeah, approved that yeah, that's un, that's unapproved yeah so uh digital phone services as well for your business from one line to one thousand lines visit comax business systems comaxwv.com that's comaxwv.com we talked about the boats earlier we have the premier pontoon boat dealer in the state of west virginia hey if you would austin Show us some of those fancy boats available at Lou. Ooh, Lou Wendell Marine Sales. Those okay. are the Avalon boats that are tri tunes and they are absolutely gorgeous. And we encourage you, right there, they are sitting in the water right now. By the way, you can look at their live camera to see what the water is doing at Lou Wendell Marine Sales.com. That's Lou Wendell Marine Sales.com. And right now, the selection of all the accessories is at a seasonal high. And so we strongly encourage you, if you're in the boating world, need stuff, need a brand new boat, check them out at Lou Wendell Marine Sales in St. Albans, LouWendellMarineSales.com. What did you take away from your stops on the Mountaineer Caravan? Because I think that would be quite interesting. Here's a guess. If you traveled that far in various directions in Washington, in the state of Washington, you wouldn't get that kind of support. Is that right? 
Yeah, he, you're exactly right. Well, we wouldn't, we would be in the middle of nowhere still in the state of Washington or Canada. Um, but I had such a great time. Um, first of all, I'd have to be like, okay, where, where am I today? What, like, uh, yeah. tell somebody show me on the map where we're going and, um, tell me about this. Uh, but it was so great. Uh, people are amazing, welcoming. Um, and like you mentioned, so state of Washington, we had that other school, university of Washington, which we all hated. That's what's so great about West Virginia is it's us, you know, you'll get those Marshall fans, you know, tucked in there, but that's fine. They don't matter. Um, I got spoken like a true West Virginia, yeah. right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, right away. Very good. Took care yeah, of they that. were so welcoming. I mean, and just, you know, maybe they don't know a whole lot about the sport of volleyball yet. Um, but, you know, they were like, had read our bios and, you know, said, I'm going to come to a game and, and um, just really, really supportive and like the nicest people. And, and that's what Ren Baker, you know, had said um, when we were looking at taking this job. And sometimes you don't know if you're, that person that your 80s is a little full of baloney or not, um, but he's he's not. Um, and these people have been amazing. What did you do to get background on Ren to make sure that he wasn't fibbing? Yes. Um, yeah, every single person that I had talked to, whether it's um, other ADs, um, coaches um, that had worked for him. So kind of funny story, North Texas. Um, the football coach that he hired at North Texas had been at Washington state. Um, and, um, so small it's coaching's a small world. Right. Um, and so you can find out all kinds of good or bad, um, about, about people and, um, just what everybody had said was amazing. Yeah. So it made sense. Go, okay. Mm -hmm. I can trust this dude. Yep. And you make that move. State of Washington grows grapes. Yes, sir. Um, they grow, they grow grapes. They make into wine. Yes. Very good wine. Actually. Yeah. So, uh, give me, give me, give me, what, what grapes are they growing out there? Um, what are they known for? Yeah. They're known, um, for their cabs. Okay. Um, All the way up there too. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Um, I mean a little bit of everything, but, um, yeah, the central part of Washington, um, you know, and I think part of it has to do with, uh, Mount St. Helens, the eruption in, in 81 and, um, just the, the volcanic ash made mm -hmm. some really, really good soil, really good soil. So, um, yeah. So I, I'm a I'm a wine fan, which mm -hmm. um, I now I just have to get it shipped here. So. Yeah. <laughs> so once again, volcanic ash being brought up on this program, Senator. If you remember, it's going to be a San Marzano discussion. Thank you very much, San mm -hmm. Marzano tomatoes, Jen, in Italy. Mm -hmm. uh, they grow unbelievably because of the volcano there that produced that dirt yeah. that makes it really super special. Tough trade, though. I mean, that's nice on the back end. You've got <laughs> yeah. a volcano yeah. come there to get yeah. the good soil. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that's a tough deal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was a little rough there in the Pompeii area. But anyway. Uh, <laughs> a little rough. <laughs> a little rough. Uh, so, like, give me, give me a couple bottles from Washington State that if someone enjoys – wine what would your couple of recommendations that they may or may not know of oh uh, man dirty sneaky little wines that people may not know about that they you go like this is really good yeah um i mean i'll say one that most people probably do know chateau saint michel um you know and and they've got um that's pretty popular wine but they get their grapes from um the central part of the uh state um so drew Bledsoe, right. um sure a former you know washington state coog um you know pl you know was a pretty good player and then that, that nfl That's before that other guy tom brady you know <laughs> took over um he's from walla walla washington which is where all these wineries are and he has um some tremendous wine it's called double back um a little on the pricier side. I was gonna say, what's that yeah, go? What's yeah. that go for a bottle? Like his, his cab um, is like 150, but he makes it this family wine that I actually like better. Right. And it comes in this cool bottle um, for you know, it's it's more of a red blend, um, which I actually like a, a lot. Yeah. So. Uh, what's what's his highest point rating on one? Like, what's blood? So is he a, is he a 93, 94, 95 I believe guy? So. Yeah. Yep. You when you go recruit, you ever uh, go over to Italy? Uh, we have been, yes, yep. S some different tasting wines yeah, over there as well. Yeah, love that. You know, Burdette does a lot of that. Uh, sometimes I can 
you know, sneak, Catch a trip. sneak in. Yeah, but we I've been to Italy probably four or five times. Well, what's the best foreign country, in your opinion, for players? Uh, Italy's definitely up there. Really? Mm-hmm. I'm stunned by this. Yes. I've been there yeah. several several times. Have, you what, haven't been you looking for volleyball, volleyball players. I, yeah. what, While you're busy eating, you didn't I, see volleyball players well, just walking around? I, I'm seeing liberos. I'm not seeing many <laughs> setters. True, true. <laughs> Isn't that right? Yeah. I mean, but they have, um, uh, in Milan especially, like yeah, just their, pro- their professional teams, um, but they have very talented uh, players. Um, you know, Serbia, Bosnia, yeah. those yeah. – um, Balkan countries, um, they're great. Uh, Poland is pretty good. Uh, Czech Republic. Um, we've had Germ- German players, so kind of all over. Women's basketball is exploding in popularity because of Caitlin Clark, among others. I mean, right. there's been a, it's been this. It's been really good players, really good players, and Clark comes along and does the whole thing with the points. Do you – I know what you hope, but do you ever see volleyball being able to become more – in that realm, so as we said, more and more people are playing. Do you ever think it can find a stronghold so that it becomes watch TV? Yeah, I I hope so. I, I think, um, yeah, if if TV companies can throw a little more volley, uh, money towards volleyball and put it on a little bit more, just like you said, you know, if it's, it's on coming. TV, uh, people will watch it. Um, it. It's coming, you know, and I, th- I think volleyball is, again, a hard sport to only have one player kind of like Caitlin Clark, um, but you might have that one team um, that, I mean, Nebraska has sold out, you know, f- their 8,000 seat arena. Like right. you cannot get a ticket um, to go watch them. Like their season tickets have been sold out. Um, and so I think um, just the college game um, is just, again, becoming super popular. If we can get it on TV a little bit more, I think that'll help. You probably need just some kind of a unbelievable generational player that people go, I have to go see fill in the blank Mm -hmm. to watch, right? That's normally how it starts. Like you got to see this girl and you go like, Oh, and that's kind of, it builds on it. Does an Olympic year help that though? (laughs) Oh, I think so for sure. That should propel it forward a little bit. I I think so for sure. Um, Because, you know, when beach volleyball became really popular, you know, you had, um, you know, Misty May and and Carrie Walsh and everybody was talking about that. And, and, um, you know, they were absolutely great for the game. Um, so yeah, I think you're, you're exactly right. If we can, uh, make a splash, um, again in, in the Olympics and, that's on TV a lot and, and get people talking about that. I think that's and, important. And guys, I think there's there's no doubt. Again, you, you've started to see volleyball more over the last year on TV, and I think you don't have to look any further. Tony, I think you take the women's basketball, Caitlin Clark model, and where women's sports is now being pushed forward. Look what they did with softball. Softball has been on a ton yep. this year, mm-hmm. and it's getting ratings, right? What the TV networks figure out. Live sports is about the only thing left on TV that's consistent. I, I think volleyball is the next to pop here. Yeah. Once they watch these ratings coming in from women's basketball, then softball on top of it, you're already mixing in volleyball. And you mentioned how it's a it's a difficult sport, but in some ways it's a pretty easy sport to follow. I don't have to know all the intricacies. Right. I did ball down, ball not down, mm-hmm. point serve. Yep. Uh, got it. Okay, I can be entertained by the athleticism. I think I I think volleyball's coming fast. I encourage folks when the women are home this fall on Fridays. A lot of people will start their weekends for home football games. Um, really Thursday nights, they start trickling in. Friday afternoons would be great uh, to head over to the Coliseum and uh, watch the WV women in action. We strongly encourage you to do that. It's not a matter of if they're going to win. The only variable is time. Yes. When? It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Hey, a reminder, you know what else is happening? On Saturday, June the 8th, Three Guys is going on the road. We're raising money for WVU's Cancer Institute and at the same time having fun. So you can do this two to two different ways. You can play golf during the day and then come in and later in the afternoon and have food and our show, or you don't have to play golf. i got to make sure I use the right finger here. I get a problem. You don't have to play golf, and you can just come in and eat and watch the show. I was, I was using two fingers. If I put the wrong one down, it might have been our last show. Anyway, for information on that, the money goes – um, to a tremendous worthwhile cause as we raise money for blood cancer disorders and the folks that need them. It's the Live Like Brent Comfort Fund, WVU alum who passed away from a blood disorder 
and these dollars go to folks that are suffering from blood disorders and their families to help them when they get treatment. You can sign up. Go to WVUCancerGolfClassic.com. WVUCancerGolfClassic.com. Is our special guest still coming, or is, was that turned out to be an overpromise? Oh, by no, you? no, no. Garrett Green's in. Garrett Green will be there. He'll be part of our show. So you're still comfortable with that? Yeah, he's good. Good. You know, yeah. Garrett, you know number six. He says, I'm in. I'm in. He doesn't play. I'm not worried about him saying he's in. I was worried about you jumping the gun. No, Garrett Green will be our special okay, guest, good. among other things. Plus, uh, Karen and Blaine Stewart will be there. We're going to dedicate a bench at the golf course in honor of late WV football coach Bill Stewart. It's a big time. We encourage you to come out and check it out. What's that website? WVU Cancer. Uh, WVUCancerGolfClassic.com. Very good. It'll be WVUCancerGolfClassic.com. How was this? Was this all right for you? This was great. You had fun? I had a great time. Yeah, seriously. Well, we'll, we'll give you I, I heard the, the one guy that's the best wasn't here, but, you know. <laughs> oh, oh, fires a shot. See, that's a veteran move, too. Music on, she fires her shot, so we can't, like, pull it down now, and retaliate. Here's, hey, listen, Hoppy isn't here. We know that. But here, here's what he would have asked you. Uh, Coach, let me ask you this. Do you think the geopolitical <laughs> sources involving the sport of volleyball perhaps could have an impact on uh, global warming? <laughs> Don't you think he'd probably be one of something his in that realm. something in that realm? Oh, so I'll practice. For next time you here. come back, we'll make sure he's here. He comes in kind of like an eclipse, like once every like <laughs> that in the, the cicadas, but once every 17 years, we'll we'll get him in here. Three guys before the game brought to us by Comax Business Systems, keeping West Virginia's business data safe, secure, and efficient. For 25 years by GoMart. Go for good times. Go for GoMart. Get that rewards card. Instantly save money on food and fuel. Three guys also brought to us by Lou Wendell Marine Sales in St. Albans. They are the dudes when it comes to boating in our state. Check them out. Lou Wendell Marine Sales.com. That'll do it for us. Special thanks. To WVU volleyball coach Jen Greeny, we encourage you folks. It'll happen here quicker than you think. The season will get rolling. You get an opportunity. Please stop by. Or if you're one of our many listeners outside of our state and we just happen to be coming into your area because a lot of those Mountaineers are transplanted, go out there and be the loudest voice on the opposing team's floor when the Mountaineers play. We're out. Thanks for being with us. For Brad Howe, Jen Greeny, our producer, Austin Wright, three guys before the game. Over, out, see ya.